The latest Marquette Law School poll was released yesterday. It looked at the races for president and U.S. Senate with less than five months to go now before the election. Charles Franklin is the director of the Marquette Law School poll. Good to see you, Charles. Good to see you. Welcome that back. Kid, we may poll on that kid now. <laughs> yeah, you should. He had, he had Bernie down pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell yeah. us what this poll looked at. What questions did you ask? Well, we looked at uh, the presidential and Senate races, of course, but we also looked at the divisions within the parties and the challenges that both parties face. Uh, so that, that's the basic lay of the land. Let's look uh, at the presidential numbers. Okay. Uh, we've got a seven-point race between Clinton and, and Trump with Clinton leading by seven. But that's for all registered voters. When you move to likely voters, the people who say they're sure they're going to vote in the fall, it actually widens a little bit to a nine-point race. We see the same thing but even bigger on the Senate race where it's a four-point race among all registered voters, but it widens to a nine-point gap for fine gold, with fine gold ahead among likely voters. What does that tell you? Well, it usually doesn't happen. Usually likely voters are a little more Republican. But what's different this time compared to March is Republicans are now less likely to say they're sure they're going to vote in the fall. Eighty-seven percent of Republicans in March said they would for sure. That's fallen to 78 percent. That's oh. what they call the enthusiasm gap? That's the enthusiasm gap, and it's the reticence about Trump as the nominee. Also, to put it in perspective, in June of 2012, 90 percent of Republicans were saying they were sure they would vote. So that's a 12-point fall-off from the last presidential election. Now, this is something that can change. It, rises over the course of the election year naturally as the race gets as the election gets closer but it also is subject to these shifts in enthusiasm shifts in the performance of the candidates and whether you think your guy had a good week or a bad week but it's an important snapshot in time right now mm -hmm. to show that the challenge for the republicans is getting their people to the polls it matters a little bit in the presidential race, but it matters quite a bit in the Senate race, that shift from a four-point to a nine-point lead, because Johnson is winning most of those Republican voters who are saying, man, maybe I won't vote. Mm. So when you include them in the registered voter sample, he does considerably better. But when they say, maybe I won't vote, it's disproportionately hurting Ron Johnson. Wow, that's a switch. It is. And like I say, it may not stay that way. Democrats, on the other hand, have moved up a little bit in commitment from vo to voting from 81 to 84 percent, saying they're sure they'll vote. So that's also helping on the Democratic side a little bit. And neither candidate is that well liked. Uh, both of them are historically low in their favorability ratings. They're net negative by large margins. Um, the unfavorable numbers were kind of startling in this poll. They, they really are. And um, the, the range here is exceptionally high. Um, we normally, for a nominee, would see, first of all, more positive than negative. And second, the negatives might be in the 20s or 30s. But if they were up into the 40s, you'd be really worried about them. Here we're seeing both candidates pushing past that. Um, and that introduces some uncertainty in the fall. And we asked about the characteristics of the candidates as well, their traits and how would you characterize them. Both of them are not seen very well on honesty. 28% say Hillary Clinton's honest, 32% say Donald Trump is honest. Those are both very low numbers. But when we turn to other things like are they qualified to be president, Clinton goes up to 56, Trump is at 30. So there's quite a difference there. Some of these, like that one, favor Clinton, even substantially. But others, like the honesty issue, first of all, she's a little below Trump. But secondly, both of them are so low on that characteristic. And the percentage of people who say they're not going to vote at all seems very high. Um, we're going to have to see if the excitement of the fall campaign can boost people. When you look, and this is the thing on the, on the Democratic side, of the Sanders voters here in the state, these are Democratic Sanders voters, uh, about 23 or 24 percent say they'll vote for neither uh, Clinton or Trump, and another 5 or 10 percent say they won't vote at all, a total of 33 percent 
of Sanders voters are saying they're not going to vote in the presidential race. But that could change. It absolutely can. And just the way the Republicans have to address and work the turnout side, Democrats have to address and work on the party unity mm -hmm. side and making the Sanders voters feel like they have a stake in this election, even if Hillary Clinton is the nominee. And he's making a statement tonight. It'll be interesting to see what he has to yes. say. Charles? Good, good to see you, Charles. Thank you.